morning dear students today we are going to start our section with the topic characters and affinities of prototheria uh, what is this prototheria prototheria we know that it is a subclass under the class mammalia and it generally in group all the mammals that are uh, laying egg and they generally resembles with the seropsida seropsida means mm, that includes birds and reptiles First, let's see the characteristics of uh, the subclass Prototheria. These Prototherians, they are generally small in size and its body is covered by hairs and spines. Its snout, snout, they all possess a snout. It is produced in the form of a beaks. And uh, external layer, external layer, if present, it is inconspicuous. Or otherwise, it is absent. So, if it is present, uh, it might uh, it may uh, so um, it's not so small. Uh, we cannot uh, we cannot recognize that uh, external ear. Sometimes it is absent, totally absent. Tail uh, it might uh, it may either present or absent. Regarding the mammary glands, mammary glands, we know that it is the main uh, keystone character of mammals. Uh, mammary glands are there, but it is without tits, tits or nipples in the case of prototheria. And if we, uh, we take the case of males, they carry a hollow, horny, hollow, uh, horny tarsal spur. Tassel spur means a uh, small horny uh, thorn like a projection I will show you where it present on each hind leg. A horny thorn like uh, projection is called spur. It is present uh, in the hind leg and it is connected with a poisonous gland that present in the hind leg. It is connected internally to a poison gland. So, that is another character of prototheria. And a temporary mammary pouch they will develop that, that is equal to tits. And when it develops, it develops during the breeding season where it develops on the abdomen of females. So, uh, these are some general characteristics. Next, we are going to see what are the features of its endoskeleton. Endoskeleton means uh, the skeletal hard uh, things, hard support these structures seen inside its body. First is about the skull. Skull. What is the peculiarity of the skull of monotremous? It looks like a like the, the skull uh, of a bird, bird-like appearance. I will show its picture. So its skull, skull of prototherians resembles to that of a bird's skull. Uh, the skull is uh, of platypus and um, we have seen that that skull is with a long rostrum and a smooth external appearance. Uh, in the case of modern monotremes, monotremes is, a, is an order under the subclass prototheria. They lack teeth. Uh, rostrum uh, is present. Uh, it is so elongate, beak like and it is covered covered by a leathery sheath sheath and also uh, in mono in this modern monotremus lacrimal bones are absent lacrimal bones means they are some uh, peculiar bones that we can see here where located in the medial wall of the orbit orbit we know that it is the uh, that place where eyes are positioned so uh, it is located that uh, lacrimal bones are the bones that is located in the medial wall of the orbit. And uh, these bones are hidden by, hidden behind the nasal bone. So, as we look a skull from front, we cannot see this lacrimal bones. And I just uh, show this for your better understanding. So, anyhow, so lacrimal bones also absent in the case of this uh, modern monotremes. Then coming to dentary bone. Uh, dentary bone is so reduced. Dentary bone means it is the uh, bone that present in the lower jaw that holds the teeth. 
okay so uh, dentary bone is reduced in the case of prototherians and uh, the adults adults adult prototherians are edentate edentate means what uh, they lack incisor and canine so such group are called edentate so adults adult prototherians are edentate and jugals jugals are reduced or absent in the case of prototherians what prototherians what is jugal jugal is a bone skull bone uh, and uh, in mammals this jugal bone is called uh, malar or psychomatic bone i will show you that jugal bone this is the jugal bone otherwise called a psychomatic bone so that's what so jugal bone is reduced or absent in the case of prototherians and that dentary bone it is a slender bone and uh, it is with a vestige means it's not uh, currently using a vestige of a coronoid process coronoid process means uh, the slender bone this slender dentary bone is with only a vestige of a coronoid process coronoid process means what uh, here in this picture we can see that coronoid uh, uh, that process it is a triangular uh, triangular as well as it is flattened from both sides uh, what is this function it gives uh, insertion insertion to the uh, muscles of mastication chewing muscles it gives a insertion site for the chewing muscles so that is coronoid process so that dentary bond it is with a uh, coronoid process in the case of prototherians uh, and uh, brain case coming to the brain case it is it is of petrosal petrosal means so hard it is so dense uh, uh, rather than uh, allosphenoid. Allosphenoid means cartilaginous type, soft type. So, its skull, brain case is of petrosal, petrosal form rather than allosphenoid type. Okay. Uh, then, these monotremes have no corpus callosum also. That is another feature. What is corpus callosum? Corpus callosum means it is a white thick nerve tract where we can see uh, it is seen beneath the cerebral cortex of the brain and it connects the two cerebral hemispheres so that's what it it, it communicate the left and right cerebral hemispheres so that is corpus callosum that corpus callosum is absent in the case of monotremes next is about the post cranial skeleton uh, regarding that in the case of uh, this uh, prototherian shoulder girdles they are complex uh, and complex means it includes uh, the standard components like uh, scapula and clavicle but along with that some additional elements like a coracoid epicoracoid and the interclavicle also present i will show its picture shoulder girdle uh, and in the case of prototherians, additional additional components like epicoracoid, uh, interclavicle, this portion T-shaped interclavicle, uh, then epicoracoid, uh, coracoid, epicoracoid is this bone, and this coracoid, uh, all these ones also present in the shouldered girdle in the case of prototherians that is one feature and the scapula scapula i have shown here scapula is this bone in the shoulder girdle that we can see it was the back uh, the scapula is simple without supraspinous fossa what is the supraspinous fossa i will show you uh, supraspinous fossa means it is a smooth concavity concave uh, side we can see on the dorsal side of the scapula what is the purpose of that concavity concavity it give attachment side for supraspinatus muscle what is the supraspinatus muscle uh, it is a muscle located on the top of the shoulder that helps the arms to raise up and down okay that is uh, clear to you 
so anyway uh, the point is that the scapula is simple without that concavity on its dorsal side and that concavity is name is supraspinous fossa and that uh, uh, shoulder girdle is more rigidly attached to the axillary skeleton of, um, of that uh, animal axillary skeleton means uh, it means it includes bones in the head neck back and chest that is the axillary skeleton axillary skeleton means bones uh, bones of which all uh, parts head neck back and chest so that scapula, um, uh, not only scapula, that shoulder girdle, girdle is more rigidly attached to the axillary skeleton uh, when compared with uh, other mammals. Uh, in other mammals, it is not that much tightly, rigidly attached to the axillary skeleton. But in prototherians, it is rigidly attached to the axillary skeleton. That is another feature. Then regarding the uh, um, position of femur and humerus bones. Femur bone is a bone that, uh, that is present in leg and humerus is the bone in uh, hand. Uh, regarding the position while that animal walks, uh, it is parallel, parallel to the ground that we can see here. This is the skeleton of echidna. Uh, in that uh, skeleton, we can see the this femur bone. It is parallel to the ground. And also humerus bone also we can see this one also parallel to the uh, ground that it walks. So uh, that is the peculiarity. The femur and humerus it is held parallel to the ground when the animal walks. And that pattern, that fashion, fashion of walking is similar to that of therapsis. Therapsis they are the ancestors. They are considered as the ancestors of the mammals. I will show its picture. This is therapsis. Uh, in this one also we can see that we have that uh, mm, mm, hum humerus and femur both are parallel to the ground where, uh, through which where it walks. Okay, it's another feature. And uh, regarding the ribs, ribs we can find uh, on neck, uh, neck vertebrae as well as uh, on the chest vertebrae. Uh, in the case of modern mammals, uh, they are restricted only to the thoracic region. But in the case of this prototherians, ribs we can locate, we can found both the neck vertebrae as well as the chest, that is cervical as well as thoracic vertebrae uh, carry ribs. Then another interesting uh, skeletal characteristics of monotribs is the presence of large epipubic bone. Large epipubic bone. Uh, this picture also will show you. This is the epipubic bone. What is this role? First, it is uh, thought that it is a structure relating to pouch. But as it is uh, present in both males and females, it is now proved that it is not that much correct. And also, that large epipubic bone is present in all, all species of marsupials, irrespective of whether it is have a pouch or not. And uh, now uh, it is the it is uh, understood that it is a vestige of skeletal element of therapsid ancestors of mammals. What was its role there? It gives some extra attachments for the abdominal muscles for what to support the weight of high quarters of its body. So it just gives. Uh, space for the extra attachments for the abdominal muscles. That's why they uh, possess this large epipubic bones. Whatever it be, the feature we need to note that this monotremes possess a large epipubic bones in the pelvic ridge. All the rest of the thing I just explained for your better understanding. The last point is that this all monotremes they possess a spur. I already showed uh, show you the picture of that spur, spur uh, on their angles on their hind leg, and uh, it is assumed it is uh, thought to be used for uh, fighting and defense. In Ornithorhynidae, uh, connecting with that spur, present a groove, and that groove connects to the poison secreting gland so the poison from that gland can uh, reach 
that's per to that group next we are going to see uh, some reproduction related features of uh, monotremus uh, the eggs laid by monotremus are too small uh, within a range of 13 to 15 millimeter and that egg is covered by a leathery shell uh, and the number of egg laid by the monotremus also very few uh, usually um, maybe one uh, two uh, or three and uh, after laying uh, that egg is placed inside mother's pouch uh, except in the case of platypus because uh, platypus uh, do not possess a pouch all the other monotremes they are placing the egg after after laying the egg they are placing that egg in mother's pouch and that egg can be a large yolk yolky egg and uh, that yolk uh, is concentrating to one end of the egg like that of a bird's egg and uh, in the case of platypus leftover ovary is functional in the case of echidna both ovaries are uh, functional and producing eggs and the eggs that is uh, shed to the infundibulum from the ovary uh, it passes to the fallopian tube and while in the fallopian tube it undergoes fertilization by the sperm and after fertilized uh, a shell is forming uh, over that egg and um, within a period of two weeks over a period of two weeks and uh, that shell is so permeable why it is permeable to uh, let all the nutrients to enter that egg for the nourishment of that uh, baby and like the uh, eggs of birds this monotremes eggs also uh, incubated and hatched outside the body of the mother that is inside the pouch and that incubation lasts for 12 days and uh, how the young one comes out of the egg by breaking the shell using the milk tooth of the young one and uh, they are fed with the milk uh, from where that milk is produced the that milk is produced from the mammary gland and after secreting from the mammary gland it is released to, or secreted to the skin skin means that skin within the pouch and that milk is sucked by the babies and weaning weaning means top page of that feeding and when it happens when that young one becomes 16 to 20 weeks old once that young one reaches this much age then uh, that weaning uh, stoppage of feeding occurs and uh, one more thing after the egg hatch and the young ones uh, comes out uh, they are fed with the mammary glands i already told you and that milk is secreted from certain pores certain pores in the case of uh, platypus but in the case of echidna from where uh, that milk is secreted from the paired glandular lobes that are present inside the pouch okay and another feature is that may have uh, a structure a bone it is called a bacula uh, bacula means it is a bone where we can found uh, this uh, for, um, bone can be found within the penis and also the male possess uh, testis and uh, and also it uh, totally lack it scrotum scrotum means it's the sac that is carrying the testis next we are going to see the affinities of prototheria uh, uh, first affinity we are going to see is the rep reptilian affinity among the prototheria monotremes show more affinities with the reptilian so let's see which are those affinities first one presence of cloaca cloaca we know it is a common opening to eliminate waste as well as the uh, sex cells so cloaca is present that is an affinity with the reptiles then pterygoids epipterygoids then uh, dumbbell shaped pre -vomers ring like tympanic bone all are present in monotremes that also is an affinity with the reptiles pterygoids means what pterygoids they are uh, muscles uh, muscles helping for mastigation uh, so that are 
pterygoid muscles that muscles are uh, present epipterygoids also uh, such type of muscles helping in mastication then dumbbell shaped prevomus prevomus means what prevomus means uh, it is a median bone that uh, can be seen under side of the cranium uh, which uh, occupies a space uh, a place of vomer this is a vomer so it occupies the same space of the vomer so that's what free warm uh, that also present ring like tympanic bone tympanic bone means our tympanic bone means it is a ring it's a bony circle uh, which surrounds the tympanic membrane so that also present these are all uh, its affinity with the reptiles and also there is no allosphenoid allosphenoid means cartilaginous type of uh bone in the brain case we have seen in the former slide that brain case is of petrocell type and also tympanic bullae that also absent tympanic bullae means it is a hollow bony structure uh, or case that we can see in the ventral and posterior most uh, side of the skull which encloses the parts of middle and inner ear okay Hmm. and uh, vertebrae vertebrae also have one speciality it is without epiphysis epiphysis means that body body of the vertebrae this epiphysis uh, uh, in the case of monotremes the vertebrae are uh, without epiphysis then cervical ribs are present what is the cervical ribs cervical ribs means it is the extra rib uh, that we can see above the first rib this is the first rib about to that we can see an extra rib that is called the cervical rib so that cervical rib is present that is another affinity with the reptiles then thoracic ribs coming to the thoracic ribs they are single headed single headed means this is single headed type only uh, that uh, bulbous portion uh, can see only in one end if it is double headed means both ends we can see some uh, specification uh, to have attachments with the other other bones or parts okay so thoracic ribs are single headed then t shaped the interclavicle t shaped the interclavicle that also present there is another affinity large coracoids coracoid bone also present and plate like precoracoids also present acetabulum acetabulum means it is a socket socket uh, for attaching the hip bone so that acetabulum um, uh, have one specialty in the case of echidna it is perforated it is with so many so many perforations that is another feature then anterior abdominal vein or its mesentery is also absent there is no corpus callosum that also i explained what is corpus callosum in the previous slide and then uh, body temperature coming to body temperature temperature is variable uh, that means it's cold blooded that's another uh, feature showing affinity with the uh, the reptiles cochlea cochlea means the uh, inner ear part of inner ear it is with the lagina lagina means what lagina means it is uh, considered as the third otolith otolith we you know it is concerned with the balancing so this uh, uh, this uh, part uh, so the lagina lagina uh, it is seen associated with the sacculus sacculus of the uh, vestibular apparatus vestibular apparatus in the case of this monotremes so in the case of monotremes cochlea is present it is with the lagina lagina is concerned with the balancing ureters ureters uh, are opening into urinogenital sinus urinogenital sinus means it's a common opening for uh, both um, uh, urine means urine and also uh, the sex cells it's a common passage so ureters are open to into a urinogenital sinus testes are present uh, it is abdominal penis uh, um, as it present it is simple and it contains only sperm 
then ovidex ovidex separately they have separate uh, ovidex means that 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 to release the ovum uh, so that ovidex opens separately into cloaca uh, in the case of monotrips, another feature is that you no know, uterus and vagina, there's a, another affinity with the reptiles. Females are oviparous, egg lying, and that eggs are large and cledoic. Cledoic means with the shell. And the newly hatched young ones, it is provided with the carangle. Carangle means uh, we can see here, this is the carangle. It's a keratinous bump on at the tip of the snout. And what is its um, function? What is the use of uh, this carangle? It's uh, this young one use that uh, carangle to break the egg shell to come out. Okay. Next, we are going to see the affinity of uh, prototheria with the aves. Avian affinity. Presence of beak in platypus. It is an avian affinity. And uh, when uh, the prototherians become adult, they uh, didn't have teeth. That is another avian affinity. Uh, then presence of webbed feet. That is another avian affinity. And presence of oil gland. That is another avian affinity shown by prototherians. Next, we are going to see the mammalian affinity. Uh, they are presence of hair, mammary glands, oil glands, sweat glands. And possess double occipital condyle. Occipital condyle means there are certain protuberances present on occipital bone. What is the function? What is the role? Uh, it will articulate the skull with the first vertebrae. That is the atlas vertebrae of the vertebrate column. In this picture, we can see that two protuberances. So, that are occipital condyles. Two are present. So, double occipital condyles is another affinity, mammalian affinity. Presence of palate. Palate means roof of the mouth. And uh, diaphragm is present. A typical mammalian diaphragm. Diaphragm, we know that uh, is present in the body cavity. And the skull is dicondylic. Dicondylic means uh, two occipital condyles are present. So, that's why skull is dicondylic. Sternum, sternum is present, which is segmented sternum. Liver is with four lobes, that is a typical mammalian feature. So, in the case of prototherian also, liver is four lobe. Heart also four chambered. Then uh, only left aortic arch is present. Aortic arch means it is a segment of the aorta that supplies blood to the uh, upper extremities, like a head, uh, all those head uh, neck uh, like that then circulatory system also uh, is typically typical mammalian type then large ear ossicles uh, malis ingus tapis so oh, that is another affinity with the mammals cochlea is present and it is slightly coiled like that of mammals fertilization is internal and a slender cecum. Cecum is the first portion of large intestine that receives the undigested food from the small intestine. So, that is another mammalian affinity. And uh, RBC of the prototherians are small like mammalian, the circular and non-nucleated. And uh, optic lobes also four. Means uh, in the brain, the centers that is concerned with vision. So, that also another affinity with the mammals presence of milk glands to secrete milk that is the last affinity that we need to mention uh, um, about uh, the mammalian affinity of prototherians even though uh, the monotremes uh, of the uh, monotremes that comes under prototherian it show affinities with the other non-mammalian groups, these mammalian features strongly support, strongly prove that uh, they are how affinity with the mammals. They are mammals. Okay, so uh, that's about prototherians, its characters and uh, its different affinities with the various uh, various forms, uh, apes, uh, reptiles, and uh, lastly mammals. With this, we finish today's section and class. Thank you.